This morning, I'm going to talk about listening to God's voice. And it's going to be a, a two-part series. So listening to God's voice and knowing what is God's will for our life. There was a story of a, of a man during a flood some years ago. And as uh, he was in his house, he was praying to God and asking, God, save me from this flood. Save me from these waters. And a little while, as the, the waters are rising in his house, a truck comes by. And the truck driver says to him, get in the truck and come with me. I'll, I'll save you. And he says, no, 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 thank you. I'm waiting for God to save me. Well, the waters rise and get up higher and higher. They're to the, to the windows and a boat comes by and the guy in the boat says, come with me. And he says, no, I'm praying for God to save me. And the boat keeps on going. Well, the waters get up to the, to the roof of the house and he goes up to the roof and he's praying, God, won't you answer my prayers? Here I am, save me. And a helicopter comes by and lets down a rope and the guy shouts out, jump on. He says, no, I'm praying for, for God to save me. And the waters rise and he dies. And he goes to heaven and he asks God, God, why didn't you save me? I kept on praying and, and listening for your voice what you're going to tell me. And God said, well, I tried to, but you didn't listen to me. I spoke through the, the voice of the truck driver and the guy on the boat and the helicopter, but you didn't recognize my voice. That's the way it is sometimes with us. How many people here, by raising of your hands, how many here would like to hear God's voice in your life? Is there anyone here that doesn't want to hear God? No? I think all of us would like to hear God. I think all of us would like to know what God is, is saying to us, what he's speaking to us, what is his desires for his life. But I think even more than us desiring to hear God's voice, I think God desires for us to hear his voice. He is more interested in you hearing his voice than you are because he has good plans for you. He has a wonderful future set up for you and he wants you to hear what he is speaking to you. He wants you to fulfill his good plans and his desires. But sometimes, just like this guy in the flood, we confine God to the way that we think that he's going to speak to us or the way that he's going to act. And we say, God, you have to do it this way. God, I'm expecting you to speak this way and no other way. We shouldn't put any limits on God. We shouldn't confine God to the way that he has to do things. Because very often, God doesn't do things our way. He's going to do things his way. And sometimes his way is a complete surprise and completely different than we'd ever expect. If you have your Bibles with me, let's open up to John chapter 10 and verses 3 to 4. John 10 verses 3 to 4. This is Jesus speaking in regards to hearing his voice. He says, the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he, go, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. If you are saved, that means that at one point in time in your life, you heard God's voice. God speaking to you to turn your life over to him. You know how to hear God's voice. 
because you are saved. But it's not enough just to hear God's voice once and enter into his kingdom. We have to keep on listening to his voice every day because sometimes he has new things for us every day. In fact, Jesus goes on to repeat in John chapter 10, verse 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So Jesus here in these two uh, fragments, he compares us to sheep and him as a shepherd. And he says the, the sheep know his voice. That the shepherd goes on ahead, the sheep hear the voice, and they listen and they follow where the voice leads them. A number of years ago, I was in England uh, visiting some friends of my wife. And one of the people there was a shepherd, and he had some sheep. And, of course, remembering what the Bible says here about sheep, I was wondering if it was true. And so uh, he said, well, go ahead, try to call them, see if they'll come over. So I'm calling them. The sheep aren't doing anything. In fact, they're probably going a bit further away. And all he says is, come here. And they all came running over to him by the fence. They knew the difference between the voices. There's a story of uh, a Christian tour group that was in Israel a number of years ago. And, and while they're on the bus, the tour guide is explaining about the shepherd and the sheep and how the sheep knows the master's voice, the shepherd's voice. And as they're driving along there in Israel, they, they look out the window and they see there's a, a huge bunch of sheep. And there's the shepherd behind them, driving the sheep forward. And one of the people said, didn't you say the shepherd goes in front? Look over there. The, the guy is in the back with his staff and he's chasing them in that direction. And so the, the tour guide tells the bus driver to stop. He gets off the bus. This is a true story. He gets off the bus. He goes down to this group of sheep and the guy that's there behind them driving the sheep. And he talks with them a little bit. And he comes back onto the bus and he says, yeah, the Bible is completely true. That wasn't the shepherd. It was the butcher. He was driving them by fear. He wasn't leading them by his voice. In Job chapter 33, verse 14, it says, God does speak. Now in one way, and now in a different way. God is speaking all the time. In fact, I can pretty much bet that this morning he's going to speak to you. But the question is, are you going to be listening? I like to take some time to look at some different ways that God speaks to us. This is going to be a two-part series, so today is more of some different examples from the Bible, and, and next week we're going to get into some more practical things on discerning God's voice and judging and, and how to be more open to hearing God's voice. But uh, we're going to take a look at some examples from the Bible of different ways in how God speaks to his children. Take a look at Genesis chapter 37, verses 5 to 9. It's the story of Joseph. We all know Joseph uh, from the Old Testament, a guy who had many, many different dreams. And he even interpreted his dreams and the dreams of other people. And it says here that Joseph had a dream and we told it to his brothers. They hated him all the more. And he said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose up and stood upright while your sheaves gathered together around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream and this time the sun and the moon and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. This is just one example, but there's many examples in the Bible of 
God speaking through dreams. Now, I'm not saying that every dream is from God. Some dreams are from ourselves. Some dreams are because you had too much pizza at night before we went to bed. But God does speak through dreams. Take another look at how God speaks through visions. In Acts chapter 9, verses 10 to 16, it's the story of a disciple called Ananias. It says, in Damascus, there was a disciple called Ananias, and the Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man called Ananias come to him and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias said, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he has to suffer for my name. We see also throughout the Bible, God speaking through visions. It can be a vision that we have ourselves. It can be a vision that someone else has for us. And just like with dreams, we need to discern whether or not it is from God. A third way that God speaks to us is through prophecy. In Acts chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, it says, Now the church at Antioch, there were prophets and there were teachers. Barnabas Simon called Niger, Lucius the Cyrene, Manon who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And while they are worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said to them, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. So here in Antioch, the Lord speaks through the prophets and says, set apart for me Paul, Barnabas and Saul for the work I called to them. And you know, later they became uh, one of the greatest missionary teams back in those days to evangelize that world. God is able to speak today also through prophecy. God also speaks through the teaching and the preaching of his word. In Acts chapter 2, verses 38 to 41, it's Peter's First and very famous sermon, it says, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and all who are fall off, and for all whom the Lord will call. And with many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. We can look in this fragment there in Acts chapter 2, and we see that they were cut to the heart by the words that Peter said, because it was the Lord Jesus that was speaking through Peter. And they gave their lives over to God because they heard God's voice through Peter's preaching. We can, when we come to church on Sunday mornings, we can pray, Lord, speak to me through today's sermon. Speak to me through today's message. And it's not only the, the preaching of the word. God can also speak to us sometimes through the worship and the music when they're based on God's word. He also speaks to us through other believers. He speaks to us through, through our leaders, but he can speak to us through other believers, brothers and sisters in the church, and even sometimes through non-believers. In Acts chapter 21, verse 4, it says, We sought out the disciples there, and we stayed with them seven days. And through the Spirit, they urged Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. And so we hear, we have here 
the Lord is speaking through the other believers, and they're encouraging. Uh, well, actually, no. Uh, they they were uh, telling him not to go to Jerusalem. It was the Lord's will for him to go to Jerusalem, but their conclusion of what the Lord was saying was not correct. Many times we hear God's voice through other people that are speaking to us, and sometimes it is the Lord's will mixed together with their own thoughts towards us. I remember a long time ago, uh, a person from my church came to me and had a word uh, he thought was from God and he was encouraging me. And part of it was from God and part of it was his own desires because he wanted to have uh, good intentions towards me, wanted to see something good happen to my life. And so we need to discern what part is from God and what part is not from God. God also speaks to us through angels. In Acts chapter 8, verses 26, it says, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. As you know the story, uh, he listened to the word of to the Lord, and he met a, a guy on a, on a chariot who was going somewhere, and he was able to preach the word of God to him. And this man got saved and brought back the gospel to his own country. So God is able to speak through angels. He's also able to speak to us through his own audible voice. In Acts chapter 9, verses 4 to 6, it says about uh, Saul, who was on his way to Damascus to persecute the church. It says, he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what to do. I have found amongst uh, believers that this form is the form that believers most often expect. They want God to speak in an audible voice to them. I'm not sure I want God to speak in an audible voice to me because when God speaks in an audible voice, or in the verse that we saw earlier, when he sends an angel, very often the people are filled with fear, they fall down, and the voice, the Lord's voice, tells them something to do that is usually very difficult, something very difficult to do, something very hard, sometimes something painful. Like here, he said, you are the one that's persecuting me, but I will send you out. And later on, we find out that he himself will be persecuted. Further on in Acts chapter 23, verse 11, Jesus appears himself and it says, the following night, the Lord stood near Paul and said, take courage. As you've testified me in Jerusalem, you must also testify in Rome. So we see angels, audible voices, and even appearances of Jesus. And the more clearer the voice, the more responsibility there is to be obedient to the voice. In Acts chapter 16, uh, 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 18 verses 6, we see that God also speaks through circumstances. But when they opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and he said to them, your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent of it. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. So Paul took the circumstances that every time he preaches to the Jews, they were opposing him. He wasn't making any progress. And so he deducted from the circumstances, I think it's God's will for me to go to the Gentiles now. And in fact, it was confirmed later, and Paul became the greatest missionary to the Gentiles, to non-Jews. The Bible also tells us that God speaks to us through creation. 
When was the last time you went outside at night and looked up at the millions of stars in the sky and think about how vast is our universe? How great is our God? It says in Psalms 19 verses 1 to 4 that the heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour out their speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they have no words. No sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out throughout all the earth, their words to the end of the earth. In the heavens, God has placed a place, a tent for the sun. Get away in nature sometimes and let God speak to you as you're out in nature, in the mountains, in the forest, looking at the stars of the sky. Because all creation testifies to God and speaks. And the most proven way the most solid way that God speaks to us is through his word. In fact, that is the number one, one way that God speaks to us through his written word that is for all of mankind. Remember the story of after the death and resurrection of Jesus, Judas had gone out and hung himself and and there was only 11 disciples left. In Acts chapter 1, verses 20, it says, Peter said, it's written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, that there be no one to dwell in it, and may another one take his place of leadership. So Peter understood from the word of God that someone else needs to take the place of the missing disciple. The Bible, in fact, is the most important factor in hearing God's voice, in knowing God's will, because it's his general will for all mankind, for you and for me. And when God has a specific will, when he has something specifically for you or for me, it will never go against his written will. So what is his general will and what is his specific will? How does he speak to us in general and how does he speak to us specifically? Well, when we read the word of God and it tells us to forgive, well, that's him speaking to you. You need to forgive. If someone has hurt you, you need to forgive them. If you have a problem with anger and the Bible says, don't let the sun go down in your anger. Well, that's God speaking to you. You need to deal with your anger and take care of the situation. So you never have to pray, God, should I forgive this person or not? God, should I take care of this problem I have with anger or not? We know that it's God's will. But then again, there's his specific will for each one of us. You're not going to open up the word of God and it's going to tell you, where you should work, what company, what city you should live in, what person you should marry, and hundreds and hundreds of other different things that you can ask God about. But he can speak to you through his word as you are opening up yourself and asking, God, speak to me, help me to know what is your word, what is your will. And with all of these uh, examples that I've give, given. These are examples of different methods of how God speaks to us. All of them can be used by God, but all of them can also be faulty. So we need to test, we need to discern, is this circumstance, is it God's will or is it not God's will? Is this what I'm hearing from my friends, is it God's will or is it not God's will? Is this dream I had, 
Is that God speaking to me or is it not speaking to me? In 1 Thessalonians verse five, uh, chapter 5, verse 21, it says, Do not quench the spirit and do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all and hold on to what is good. We need to test, 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 and confirm. One thing that I do in, in my life is when I'm praying and asking God about something and I feel that he is speaking to me, whether it's one of these different methods, one of the things that I do is I always write it down on a piece of paper and put the date and the circumstances around it. And then I pray, God, I ask that you would confirm this through a different source, through another source that is not familiar with the circumstance, not familiar with what I'm asking you about. It's not a lack of faith to ask God for confirmation. In, in fact, it's it's a very wise thing to do because we can make a mistake in, in thinking that whatever has happened, that, that it's God's voice speaking to us. So I encourage you, write down things that you think God is speaking to you and then ask for confirmation. Ask for confirmation from a different source. First John chapter four, verse one, it says, dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is in regards to false prophets and false teaching, but I think we can use it wider also to, to test everything that we have, that we hear and that we think is from God. God is not mad at us if we test. In fact, I think God is, is happy that we are making sure that it's his voice. A number of years ago, when I was still in the United States, I was praying and asking God. I felt in my heart that God wanted me to smuggle Bibles into Siberia. And that was just something I had in my heart. And I was praying about it. You know, God, is this really from you? Should, should I smuggle Bibles into Siberia? Back in those times, Bibles weren't available. And uh, you couldn't, it was against the law to bring Bibles into, into Russia. And I was praying and, and asking God, God, I really want confirmation. And I remember I had been in my house. I was, I was praying. I was fasting. I was asking God, give me some confirmation. And then I just turned on the radio. I just turned the knob. And the first thing that I heard was this. Do you want to go to Siberia? And I turned off the radio. <laughs> I said, okay, God, I know that's you speaking to me. <laughs> and as some of you know the story, uh, I was able to smuggle Bibles to the underground church there. Most of these methods God has used with me, not all of them, but many of these methods God has used with me. And I can say that God really, really wants you to know what his will is. He doesn't want you to be wondering, God, should I do this? Should I do that? God, should I go here? Should I go there? God, should I take this job? Should I take that job? He really wants you to know. He really wants to speak to you. In fact, he's probably already speaking to you. But we need to learn how to listen better. I'd like for us to take a, a little bit of time now. And I want to ask you a question. What are you seeking God for right now? Are you praying for anything right now and you're saying, God, speak to me. I want to know. What is your will in this circumstance, in this situation? Lord, what are you speaking to me? We're going to ask the, the worship team to come up. And as, as we're worshiping, I'm going to ask that you would focus your attention on the Lord. 
ask the Lord about this thing that's been on your heart recently. And while we're worshiping, ask the Lord to speak into your heart. The Holy Spirit who lives in you, for him to speak to your spirit. And maybe in a different way, later today or in the evening, God might confirm what he's speaking to you. Don't take it lightly. After God confirms his word to you, don't ask for a third and a fourth and a tenth and a twentieth confirmation. You know, when Gideon was asking for God's will and he put out the fleece, he did it once, he did it twice, but he didn't do it a third and a fourth and a fifth and a tenth time. He said, okay, God's confirmed it. I know what his will is, and now it's time for me to act. So as we're worshiping, let's stand up and let's pray right now. Lord God, I have this question. I'm seeking you about this matter in my life. And I ask that you would speak to me about it. Lord, even right now during the worship, Lord, that you would speak to my heart. I'd have confirmation. I'd have peace in my heart. I would know that this is the way that you're leading me. And Lord, I would ask that you would bring confirmation, Lord, through sisters and brothers, Lord, through circumstances, Lord, through maybe a dream tonight, maybe through my husband, my wife, my child. Lord, because the most important thing is knowing your voice and then being obedient. Lord, I want to know your voice. And then I want to be obedient. Follow your voice and do what you ask me to do.